Uh, amongst the, f the rights of the husband upon his wife, number one is a ta'a. He can imagine to have a leader, a person who's a guardian and who's not being obeyed. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mm -hmm. says, فَالصَّالِحَاتُ قَانِتَاتِ Imam al-Razi in his tafsir says that when a woman is a righteous, she's devoutly obedient. And if she's not, she's not righteous. Yeah. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala stated that if she obeys her husband, that means she obeys Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yeah. But we have to put some, you know, to frame that, to put some limits, to understand that this obedience is not for granted. No. So there are a few facts we have to share and understand concerning disobedience. The, the, the wife had to obey the husband. Mm -hmm. The first one, disobedience have to, have to be in order with what Allah and His Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam commanded. So basically, there is no obedience if he commands her to do anything that violates any prohibitions. Because our first obedience is always to Allah. Exactly. Any haram. Because the Prophet says, لا طاعة في معصية إنما الطاعة في المعروف. There is no obedience to no one when it comes to disobeying Allah subhanahu wa taala. Obedience is only whenever you're commanded to do what's okay, Just what's right. إنما الطاعة في المعروف. It was narrated that a lady from Al Ansar had her daughter got married, and uh, she started losing her hair. Mm -hmm. So she came to the Prophet وسلم, to so ask so. him that uh, her son-in-law mm -hmm. asked her to connect the hair of her daughter with some other lady's hair. What we call it today, wearing a wig. A a a a a yeah. <laughs> yes. So the Prophet وسلم, answered mm -hmm. her saying, don't do that. Since Allah has cursed al-wasila wal mustawsila the one who connects the hair with others, mm -hmm. whether artificial or you know, somebody else's hair, and the one who asks for it to be done for herself. So, la ta'ata li makhlukin fi ma'asiyat al-khalaq. So, if a husband asks his wife not to fast during Ramadan, to skip the prayers, say, sorry. Uh, some husbands who are in business and so on, they require their wives to uh, accompany them in business meetings, in business dinner or lunch, mm -hmm. and they force them to shake hands sometimes to give hugs and kisses to foreigners, yes, to yes, their yes. business partners. This is, uh, you know, the a culture. part of the deal, mm -hmm. you know. So we say, at that, when the, hu when the wife knows there is an asiyah, there is a sin, in that she should not obey her husband. لا طاعة لمخلوق في معصية الخالق. So on the other hand is that if their husband just ignored it without telling her, he 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 answered the scene of what the, the wife was doing. No. But I've seen this in Indonesia. The woman goes like that to every man, yeah, to shake hand. And it's like a part of their culture that they, they are doing. It, it's understood that uh, shaking hands with the person who is non-mahram is haram. Yes. And the Prophet ﷺ, even while accepting the Pledge of Allegiance uh, from uh, women, he shook hands with men, but when it came to women, it was just verbally, without shaking hands with any of them. You know? mm -hmm. So this is very, very important. Some husbands even ask their wives to drink. Yeah, I've read that actually. They what? ask their wives to drink wine. So to to put in, like, in social situations and stuff like no. this. And uh, I, I had some ladies complain to me that she wanted to wear hijab mm -hmm. uh, because this is what Allah commanded her to do. But her husband would refuse so. So in this case, uh, especially if the wife is newly coming to Islam and being religiously committed, she had to understand that uh, her and her husband were in jahiliyyah. She has to take it easy on her husband. But if the person is stubborn and he is totally uh, of the guidelines of the deed, mm -hmm. and he constantly forces her to do things or asks, uh, asks her to do things uh, which will disobey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala if she would do it, then لا طاعة لمخلوق في معصية الخالق Sheikh, imagine like, for example, I even heard this, like they already founded a family, they have kids, and uh, the her husband is still like living in jahiliya but she became religious and he's always against her would she 
ask for divorce then? If 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 he always uh, ask for her to to do stuff that has nothing. This to is a very stuff. very touchy question because we're talking about destroying a life. We said mm -hmm. that uh, if you're recently come into Islam and so on, maybe you need to have some patience to train your husband and so on. Mm -hmm. uh, but don't compromise on the account of your deen. Mm -hmm. This is very very important mm -hmm. because paradise is not for cheap. Is very very expensive. Mm -hmm. uh, it has a price. Indeed, the goods of Allah are uh, very expensive because it's paradise. Mm -hmm. The second fact we have to understand and keep in mind when it comes to a ta'a, the wife obeying her husband, is that the husband, uh, whenever he would ask, he should ask for something that's affordable. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala himself stated that in the Quran, لا يكلف الله نفسا إلا وسعها. Allah does not burden any soul beyond its scope. So when He orders us to do anything, it's something that's affordable and we can do it with pleasure. On the side, be merciful though. So one have to keep in mind this, you know, understanding. One of the most beautiful supplications that the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم taught us is called the du'a. Of asking for forgiveness, the master of asking for forgiveness. He says, if a person says his du'a in the morning, then he dies. He would enter directly to paradise. Mm -hmm. And if a person would say this du'a in the evening, then dies, he would end up in paradise. He or she. This du'a <laughs> is called Sayyid al-Istighfar, which is basically, Allahumma anta Rabbi la ilaha illa ant. Oh Allah, you are my Lord. There is no ilah, there is no God who is worthy of worship but you. خَلَقَتَنِي وَأَنَا عَبْدُكُ You've created me and I'm your slave and I'm your servant. وَأَنَا عَلَىٰ عَهْدِكَ وَوَعْدِكَ مَسْتَطَعْتْ And I keep my promise and covenant with you as much as I can. This is very important and underline this. Even with this most beautiful dua, Instead of asking for forgiveness, uh, renewing our covenant with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we say, as much as we can. So if this with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, what about amongst humans? Mm -hmm. I seek refuge with you from the evil of what I have done. I admit your favor upon me. And I admit my sins, which I've committed. Faghfirli, so please, I beg you for forgiveness. فَإِنَّهُ لَا يَغْفِرُ الذُّنُوبَ إِلَّا أَنْتَ Since indeed no one forgives sins but you. You're begging Allah to forgive your sins, to pardon you. And you're renewing your promise and covenant with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and saying, being fair as much as I can. Since the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, Whatever I prohibited you from, don't do it. Quit. And whatever I commanded you to do, do as much as you can afford. These are the divine commands. We do as much as we can afford since Allah does not impose anything upon us beyond their, uh, our capacity. So humans should keep that in mind. Whether you are a boss at work, whether you are a husband at home, even with your servants, your employees, the Prophet says, "Ikhwanukum khawalukum." Your servants are but your brothers. So, Sheikh, so the best of obedience is out of love and respect, isn't it? True, not out of fear. You know, al qawama is some sort of leadership, and the Prophet said, "Khiyawa imatikum, the best of your rulers." And your emirs and leadership are those whom you love and they love you. They pray for you and you pray for them. You exchange respect and love. And the worst of them, those whom you dislike and they dislike you. And accordingly, they curse you and you curse them. You don't want to have this relationship with your family members. You being a pharaoh at home, a dictator. Yes, but out of love and respect, and you pray for each other because you understand that. You're asking them to do the best. You know, Sayyiduna uh, Hussain ibn Mihsan said that uh, my aunt uh, visited the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam once, and he asked her, 
uh, are you married? Do you have a husband? She said, yes. So he asked her, uh, how do you treat him? She said, I obey him as much as I can. The Prophet ﷺ advised her saying that, you know, you better take care of him because your husband is either your paradise or your part of him. He's the key of to either one of them. Or the hellfire. Exactly. Yeah. He, he, he needs her to... Yes. Hmm. If, you, if you take care of him, if you obey him and pay due respect to him, he's the key to paradise. Yeah. Hmm. As the lady who come, came to us, the Prophet ﷺ, about يعني, uh, the men get to attend the jama'ah and jum'ah and the funeral and they go to the battlefield and the, they die as shuhada and we take care of their kids and we raise them for them and we guard hmm. their wealth. Mm -hmm. And do we get anything of the reward? So the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that being a devoutly obedient wife to Allah and to your husband, mm -hmm. taking care of your family, taking care of your husband, that's equal to all of that. You share with him the same reward. Because obeying your husband, you're obeying Allah. Yeah, true. Yes, yeah, Shaykh. Well, remember we talk about this fasting. And we know... Ramadan fasting is fardu upon every one of us. So we're asking about this fasting that the girls do voluntarily, in the sense that if she does this voluntarily, some uh, some may ask, some men may ask to you know to stop their fasting because of their needs. Could you explain more about that? That's actually the husband's right. This is one of the rights of the husband upon his wife. <laughs> if it is outside the fard, the obligatory fasting, she should not observe fasting in his presence without his permission. Uh, Sufan ibn Mu'attil's wife came to the Prophet Sallallahu complaining about uh, some behavior of her husband. And Sufan ibn Mu'attil was a great companion. Mm -hmm. She said that he makes me break my fast. So the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi asked him, why do you do that? He said, Ya Rasulullah, I'm a young man. I have needs. I have, uh, you know, and I have a very little pa patience. Mm -hmm. So, you know, he's talking as regards of sexual needs. So the Prophet ﷺ made a statement which said that, that it's not permissible for a woman to observe fasting, mm -hmm. optional fasting, voluntary fasting, you know, mm -hmm. in the presence of her husband without his permission. Because if she informs him in advance that she's going to fast, he keeps that in mind, you know, mm -hmm. so he considers that. But also, if the husband is aware that the, the wife observes fasting regularly, Mondays and Thursdays, and he doesn't have a problem with that, so she doesn't have to ask him, you know, on a regular basis. She doesn't have to ask maybe, maybe Sunday night. Especially if he's fasting too. <laughs> <laughs> so know? in the end, in terms of the needs, is so when a man needs, uh, a wife have to drop, a wife have to drop everything and uh, serve the needs of the husband. Because otherwise, mm -hmm. there is a haram way. And that's why one gets married. Mm -hmm. So that he can protect his chastity. He can find his, uh, to fulfill his desire in a halal manner. You know, and same with her. That she gets married. Absolutely. Also, so that yeah. she can fulfill her needs. You know what's uh, interesting was we're discussing that you know she should not fast without his permission if it is voluntary. I hope that the case is common in the Muslim houses, yes. in the Muslim societies, mm -hmm. where they compete as regards fasting and doing Praying ibadah night, and so on. As the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, May Allah have mercy on a, a woman who gets up at night to pray yes. and she wakes up her husband and if he's too sleepy, she splashes some water on her face to yes, get up. Yes. And uh, may Allah have mercy on a man who gets up at night to, to pray. Mm -hmm. So he wakes up his uh, wife and he splashes some water on her face mm -hmm. uh, if she's too sleepy. Why? So that they can pray together in the middle of the night. Yes, oh, beautiful. I, I wish every home in the Muslim Ummah would be like that. We do wish. Yeah. You know, uh, once again back to uh, the rights. Uh, coming to being a guardian, I say that everyone is a guardian, as the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam stated. So the wife too is a guardian, and she's in charge for her household and for the wealth and positions of her husband. Mm -hmm. And she's not allowed to spend any of his wealth without his permission or knowledge. Mm -hmm. Unless if he allows her and he says, you know, you have uh, the, the freedom to do whatever you want. And with the, uh, moderately. Mm -hmm. Because the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, when he was asked about that, he said that it's not permissible for a woman to spend out of her husband's wealth without his permission. They said, what about food? He said, food is the best of wealth. Mm -hmm. However, in a case of giving a charity, the Prophet ﷺ so, so. says, yes. if a woman gives in a charity out of her husband's wealth and positions, 
she gets a photo word because of spending. Mm -hmm. And he gets a photo word because of earning. So two rewards for the same action. Mm -hmm. This is a very smart way to double and multiply the reward by letting your wife donate and giving a charity. But on one condition, that the husband is aware of that and he approves that. I know with my wife that I, I give her like the amount of money for the household for the month. And whatever she does with it, that that's on her. You know, that's the amount of the money that's that's supposed to be spent on. You know, you gotta everything. keep cool. You gotta keep cool, or she's gonna spend all the money. <laughs> no, I mean she, she's really good at it. She's actually probably better with money than me. But but if she gives sadaqa out of it, that's uh, Allahu Akbar. That's what she can do with it. If she wants to 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 you know buy groceries with it, inshallah, that's what she'll do too. But. You know, that, that's kind of her role. That's the way it's set up That because I don't have time to be messing with it. Yeah, that. just keep in mind this is uh, a marriage life is, uh, you know, uh, is based on love and compassion. It's not a battlefield. Like companionship. And, uh, combat. A companionship. <laughs> we complete each other. No, no competition in respect of uh, my rights versus your rights. Competition in, uh, as regards good, righteous deeds. Uh, helping one another to improve themselves, to be better believers, to raise the kids properly, and to draw closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Is one of the rights of the husband over his wife that, that she educates his children? Absolutely. Absolutely. Oh. Because we said before that uh, she's a guardian at home. The man is outside. He's working. He's earning to support the family. Most of the time he's away from his family. Mm -hmm. But a great portion of his time is to take care of his family as well at home. Right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But most of the time, who's staying with the children? The wife. the wife. So it is a main assignment for a woman to raise the children properly, to teach them the Quran. As a matter of fact, it starts as early as once she gives birth. Allah mm -hmm. subhanahu wa ta'ala stated in Surah Al-Baqarah, وَالْوَالِدَاتُ يُرْضِعْنَ أَوْلَادَهُنَّ حَوْلَيْنِ كَامِلَيْنِ لِمَنْ أَرَادَ أَنْ يُتِمَّ الرَّضَاعَةِ وعلى المولود له رزقهن وكسوتهن بالمعروف. Look at the beautiful balance in this ayah. You know, he laid down upon a woman the responsibility of suckling the milk to the baby. You know, mm -hmm. breastfeeding the child. Breastfeeding child. For two complete years, if they plan to complete the course. Mm -hmm. And upon the man, the kiswa, what is to provide for them, for the children and for the mother. And to clothe them, spending. So keeping balance is, is a very, very beautiful thing. Mm. Uh, you know, unfortunately, uh, many mothers, they get up at noon almost. They are not working. They're so they get up at noon. And once they get up, they start uh, flipping the, the channels. The, channel, yeah. the kids are playing around, doing nothing if they're not at school mm -hmm. or during the summer vacation. Mm -hmm. She's not keeping in mind that she's setting the rule. That no. This is a little idol there, the yeah. TV. Yeah. So they copy her oh. and they learn from the TV instead of, and the TV doesn't teach much, but exactly. harmful things in, mm. in most cases. Commercialism. Well, in, in the land I come from, the uh, majority of parents are out. So they education to their child, mostly their mates, Indonesian mates. They, they speak serious, better Indonesian yeah. and they speak uh, their that language. That comes so. to talk about another right, which is the right of the husband of having his wife stay at home. Mm -hmm. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala stated that وَقَرُنَّ فِي بُيُوتِكُنْ And stay and settle down at your homes, mm -hmm. your houses. Why? Because somebody has to manage the inside and somebody has to work outside okay. to support the inside. So managing the inside was mainly the job of the wife. The, the wife. Oh, the wife sorry. <laughs> sometimes, <laughs> sometimes, however, sometimes that a woman have to work to give a hand to the husband mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. he's very poor, mm -hmm. you know, not just because they have to buy another car With or move to a bigger, bigger house. house, no, <laughs> just to have a bigger saving, no. Uh, there is, there is an instant earlier. need and demand. Like say the Asma uh, bint Abi Bakr, may Allah be pleased with them. She was married to Az Zubair ibn al Awam and he was a great companion too. By the way, he was one of the ten people whom the Prophet وسلم, gave a glad tidings that they would be in paradise. But he was very poor. He had nothing but a property that the Prophet ﷺ gave, and a horse and a camel. Asma did not have a servant nor a maid. She used to grind the seeds. She used to feed the camel, take care of the horse and wash him, and prepare the food for her husband. She was doing everything, carrying even the seeds on her head 
for a distance of an hour walking back and forth. Now, so that's a different case. But if your husband can afford to provide for the family, then take care of your main job and main duty and business. Okay. Uh, and I understand that this part uh, concerns men more than women. But sharing this with the women will make them understand the fact that what goes around comes around. Mm. By the meaning, the next right is taking care of the husband's parents. Especially if the husband has only one parent, especially the mother. mother or we call her the mother-in-law. <laughs> In many cases, there is a, a constant conflict between the wife and the mother. Mm -hmm. Why? A competition over <laughs> the son, who is the husband. So I say to the wife, taking care of her is like taking care of your own mother. And it's like a credit. You take care of her since she's an old lady. And she's the one who gave birth to your husband. She raised him. She prepared him. And she offered you him on a golden mm -hmm. tray. So you have to give thanks by taking care of her while she's old. So, Inshallah. when you get old... Inshallah, your kids will do it. Exactly. You'll get the same treatment. This is a wonderful concept because, you know, in, in the West, in America, and in Canada, yeah. uh, we throw our old people in a nursing home. That's, and no what, one takes what, care that's of what most people do. And so it's nice to know that a, a man's right over his wife is that she'll take care of his mom Absolutely. or his father with him when they become older. Now, before I leave, um, we should remember and mention those rights which are shared between the husband and the wife as well. The mutual rights. The mutual rights. Yeah. Mainly <coughs> to satisfy the sexual desire. It's not for either one. It's for both of them. And accordingly, one must keep in mind that his wife has needs. And the wife would keep in mind that the husband has needs. And that's why when Amr ibn al-As, may Allah be pleased with him, stated to the Prophet Sallallahu that so, his son is not taking care of his wife. He's constantly fasting during the day, praying, praying at night. night. The Prophet Sallallahu called him to him and said, Ya Amr, I was told that uh, you fast on every single day and you pray all night long. So uh, Abdullah, the son of Amr ibn al-As, was happy to hear that and said, Yes, Ya Rasulullah, I do. So the Prophet Sallallahu shocked him and said, Don't. He said, well, what do you mean? He said, don't. Don't do it. Mm -hmm. Three days every month should be sufficient as voluntary fasting. And pray sometime and take rest. Take rest and take care of your uh, wife, mm -hmm. you know, of her needs. And he stated, sallallahu alayhi wa a beautiful statement where he said that, Inna li alayka Your body has right upon you. Yes. And your eyes That's have right over you. And your wife has right. rights upon you. Upon you. And your guests have rights upon you. Mm -hmm. So give everyone their rights. 